Hey, I'm Sean, and I just made this rustic, reclaimed pallet wood upcycled mirror. Let me show you how I did it. This mirror was damaged in shipping, as you can see. Uh, the frame is supposed to be round and not have that cardioid shape to it. It was an item for my wife's interior design company. Um, it arrived damaged, and the company issued a refund, but they said just throw it away. They don't want it back. And since I hate throwing good things away into the landfill, I thought maybe I can repurpose it. So I got to work cutting out the mirror because the mirror was fine. The glass was fine. It was just the frame that was busted. So I got to work cutting and scraping all the adhesive that was holding the glass in place. Somebody got new shoes today. So I finally got the mirror free, and turns out it was made China. The wood came from a palette, and it had this really cool color variation in it. I have no idea what kind it is, so if you know, let me know down in the comments. You can see there it almost looks like some spalting. I don't know if it really is spalting or not, but it really looked good definitely more interesting than normal pallet wood with that nice light to dark color variation. First step was to break down the pallet, but you know what that looks like. I'm not going to film that and show you. Uh, then I, while the pieces were still long, I sanded them down from uh, 80 grit to 150. And because I was making individual segments for the mirror, it was a lot easier to sand them first while the planks were still long instead of uh, the individual pieces on the finished product. I'm really trying to get in the habit of cleaning in between each task, just so my workspace doesn't become a complete disaster. Next was to get out the crosscut sled so I could cut all the pieces to length. And here I'm setting my stop block. my sled runners kept running into my workbench, so I had to wobble the saw out a little bit, give me some room. So I noticed my stop block was going to um, have a bunch of dust build up in front of it, so I decided to raise it up just a little bit, and I'm just using my table saw blade changing wrench thingy. And slide it back out, and I'm ready to go. So first, cut a clean edge on one of the pieces, and then just started ripping through them. I cut all the pieces to final length here, and looking back, that's something I really wish I had done differently, uh, because I wanted the finished product to have a nice, smooth, circular edge around the outside. But after talking to my wife about it, she thought having the individual pieces staggered as they go around the mirror would look better. So, although I should have cut these pieces about two inches longer to give myself some wiggle room in the final glue up, it turned out okay since we decided to go with a staggered edge instead of a smooth edge around the mirror. Having a staggered edge actually really helped quite a bit in that final glue up because there's so many imperfections and variations in pallet wood. Getting them all lined up perfectly just would have been ridiculous. So having that staggered edge just really helped out. And here I'm cutting them all to a final width. And you can see that nice color variation again. It's too red to be poplar, but not red enough to be cedar, so I really have no idea what it is. That little wedge on the cross-cut sled is four and a half degrees. I wanted 40 segments uh, to go around the mirror, so 360 degrees in a circle divided by 40 segments equals nine degrees per segment. And since you want the segment symmetrical, each side has to have an angle of half of nine, which is 4.5 degrees. I lost the footage, but I made that little wedge with my Wixie magnetic blade angle indicator and that's the only thing I have that could even get near half a degree of accuracy but as you can see this is anything but precision work and 
when you're doing rustic, then precision really isn't needed. Not in my opinion, anyways. So watch what happens here in real time. You can see the cutoff piece getting grabbed by the blade and just being thrown straight back into the slot on my cross crotch sled there. This happened several times and all I had to do to fix it was just use the same wedge but just cut it on the other side of the blade. Then the piece shooting back would have had the broad side of that wedge shooting back to the fence and not the pointy side. So after cutting a handful and lining them up together, you can see they're starting to form that nice curve. And after cutting more than a handful, that final circular shape is starting to come into view. So I laid them all out and lined them up and realized I have a nice big gap. What am I going to do with that gap? So I cut down all the ones that were a little bit wider than the others which in this case was about 76 millimeters. Once I did that, it got me closer, but I still had a gap that I had to fill. So two things fixed it. One was making the outer edge staggered, like we talked about earlier, but also making two of the pieces that were about half the width of the others, and that made it all kind of come together and fit better. For the first phase of the glue up, I just did uh, two pieces at a time. Um, and that really went pretty well, that wasn't too bad. And especially because I had so many of those little cutoffs, I could put those on either side of the glue up and get a nice seat on the clamping surface. The other thing that helped was to uh, not move the pieces at all, like always keep them exactly where they are once I got it laid out. So you can see me there just slowly sliding each section right back in to where it was when I laid it out on the table, and then I could move on to the next phase of the glue up. Off camera, I glued up several more sub assemblies, and here I'm getting the last pieces in place for the final glue up. I had to get a little creative here because I don't have one of those fancy band clamps, so I just used a bunch of purple paracord and a couple of F clamps on the edge of the table. This actually worked really well. Um, paracord is a lot stretchier than I realized, so I had to take out a lot of slack, but once I did that a few times and got the clamps nice and tight, it pulled it all together really well. Almost there. I used the backer board from the original mirror to scribe a line around the inside of the frame and then got out the router and set it up to do the rabbit. Check out those white knuckles. The router is the one tool in my shop that I have the least amount of experience with, so sometimes it's a little scary when I get it out. I always take lots of shallow passes and go really slow, but I get it done eventually. There's the backer board I was talking about. It's the same size as the mirror, so if it fits, then the mirror fits. And it fits! I used the old backer board to lay out the new backer board, which was slightly larger, and then cut it out. I like to keep the power switch lockout on the tension lever of my bandsaw. That way I can't turn my bandsaw on without having proper tension on the blade. Here's how you freehand a circle. I had to clean up a little more of that adhesive off the mirror, and then I could finally set it into place. Once I got the backer board screwed down, the only thing left was to put on some mounting hardware. And that was really easy. I just had to make sure that the screws went into the frame and not into the mirror. Thanks so much for watching. I plan to do more videos like this, so please subscribe and like this video, and I'll see you on the next one.